Hi there folks, in today's demonstration I have a series of challenges using a JSON array within Power Automate. So what's a JSON array? Well it's those square and squiggly brackets that you'll quite often see in the output history of some of your actions within Power Automate. So a common one would be list rows or get items and I have five different challenges that I think are quite common use cases that I'd like you to either follow along in today's demonstration or via downloadable flow, try them out yourself before watching this video. So also available to download in the description is, a, is this flow that you see on screen here. So not only do I have the challenges within the, the scopes, I also have the answers. So if there's something that doesn't make particular sense, you can go and have a look at those individual answers and check out the actions that I have used. So jumping back onto my main flow, the first thing to look at is my compose. And within that, you can see I have an array. So that array has six key values, ranging from an ID all the way down to a gender. And I have 10 individual objects. So we've got plenty of data there to play with within my flow. Then if we quickly have a look at each of these challenges before we jump into solving them. So challenge one is all about creating a semicolon separated string of emails. So email one, semicolon, email two, etc. Now challenge two is adding a new property to the existing array. So we're looking to combine both the first and the last name to create a new property, full name. Challenge three is all about summing the ages and also retrieving the minimum and maximum age. Challenge four, is summarizing the number of male and female people in the array. And I know I have six female and four male. And finally, challenge five, we have another compose action within the array in it, which contains some responses based on a quiz that's been completed. I can see that four of those people have responded. Let's try and determine who hasn't responded from that original array. So let's jump into challenge one. So challenge one is all about creating a semicolon separated string of emails. And if I open up the original array, we can see here that I have an email key and then the value with the email. So the first thing I want to do is I want to get those emails into a new array. So I'm going to add an action and that action is going to be a select. Now the select requires an input and that's all based on our sample array above. And then I want to use this little switch here to switch into text mode. Now this is where it's quite useful to know how to build out an expression. I could use the parse JSON expression, but I'm quite confident with creating expressions. So I'm going to go into the expression tab here and type in item with the open close brackets, a question mark, some square brackets, and then some single quotes. Now within that single quotes, I want to put in the word email, and that's based on the key name that we have within the array that is created in the compose above. And what this will simply do is it will return an array of all those emails. Now the next thing I want to do is I want to convert that array of emails into a string. So using a compose action, I can then use another expression. If we go into the expression tab and that expression is join. So that join will take every value within that array and join it based on a delimiter or string. So we're joining on some dynamic content based on that select. So I can insert the select as our first parameter. And the second parameter is going to be in single quotes that we see on screen there with the semicolon in between. So if I hit OK, we'll go ahead and test this and just double, double check to make sure that we've got the desired output before moving on to the next challenge. So the flow is completed successfully. If we go into challenge one, we can see that the output of the select has returned an array of email addresses. And then the output of the compose is all those email addresses with the semicolon separation. Now that's perfect if you want to send an email to everyone in this list in one go. If however you want to send emails to individuals uniquely, you could provide the output of this select action into an apply to each, and then that would send an email to each of these users individually. So moving on to challenge two, we can see that we need to add a new property full name to the existing array. And we can do that using a select. 
So that select will take again that same array, the compose sample array as an input. And what a select does is it loops through each of the objects. So if we have a quick look at that sample array at the top there, it will loop through like an apply to each through object one, then object two, then object three. And of course, what we want to do is we want to combine the first name and the last name to create a new property, full name. So using that output there as the input, we can again put the select into text mode and we're going to use an expression called add property. And so what that add property is going to do is it's going to add a brand new property called the full name and we're going to combine the first name and last name to create that new value. So using the open and close brackets, the update is based on item. And so item is based on each object within this output we have here. Then we want to add a new property. That property is going to be called full name. And then finally, we want to know what that value is of that new property. So the value is going to be based on a concatenation or a concat. And that concat, if we put some open and close brackets, is based on item, open and close brackets, question mark, square brackets, single quotes, first name, which is first underscore name. We then want to go to the end of that expression there, the end of the square bracket. We want to put in some more single quotes with a space in between because we're going to concatenate a space in between the first and last name. And then another comma followed by, again, item, open close brackets, question mark, square brackets, single quotes, and last underscore name. So all that's going to do is it's going to loop through each of the objects in that array. It's going to combine the first name and last name and add a new property called full underscore name. So let's go ahead and test. Again, if we jump into challenge number two, open our select, you can see that we started with an object that contained the first and the last name. And if I jump into the outputs, if we look at the bottom here, we can see we now have the full name, for instance, Stevanna Bernhardt. On to challenge number three. So we need to sum the ages, retrieve the minimum and maximum age. And like we did with the challenge for the email, again, we need to get an array of those ages. So I'm going to use a select action again. And this select action is going to be based on that sample array. I'm going to put the flow or the action into text mode and I want to retrieve the age. So into the expression tab, type an item with the open and close brackets, the square brackets, single quotes and type in age and that will give me an array of all those ages. Now there are potentially two different ways of adding numbers in Power Automate. One is you can use an apply to each loop with a variable and for each of the values in the array you can add it to the variable. But what I'm going to do today is to show you a slightly more advanced technique using XML and XPath. So the first thing that I need to do is I need to create a new object. So I'm going to put in the squiggly brackets, both the opening and the closing there. I need to have a root key that you see there with a semicolon. And then I need to have, again, some squiggly brackets, which I'll put at the top and the bottom there. And within that, I need to have another key name, which I'm going to call age, followed by the array that I've created in select three. So I can go and select the dynamic value there, select three. Now that's saved nicely. The final part of this solution is to call XPath. So another compose. And what I'm going to do here is I am going to go into the expression tab and I need to convert the compose to into XML. So there is an expression, XML, with the open and close brackets, I can go into the dynamic tab and select compose to. Now the next part of this solution, if you note, I've gone to the start of the expression, is to use the XPath expression, which comes again with opening and closing brackets, but it's looking for an XPath expression. And I do have a couple of videos on how to use XPath if you're new to XPath, but quite simply, what I want to do, 
I want to sum, again, open and close brackets, and the value that I want to sum is the root and the age. Now, finally, if I put my closing bracket there, we have a quick look, quick look at the expression. If I hit OK, that should sum all of our ages. Now, the final final part of this solution was, of course, to get the minimum and the maximum age. So I'll insert one more compose, and I'll say the min age is and the max age is. And we need to create some more expressions. So there is, in fact, a min and a maximum. So we can use min with the brackets and then the output from select three, which is our array. So it will simply look at that array and retrieve the minimum or the maximum. So there's the minimum based on select three and the max, again, into expression, type in max, open and close brackets and select select three. Okay, let's go ahead and save and test this one and make sure we've got our total ages and also the minimum and the maximum. So if I look at select three, you can see we have all those ages in an array. The compose is creating that new object with our root and the age, which you can see there. We have our XML output or XPath output, which gives us our total of 527. And then if we look at our final compose, we can see that the minimum age is 32 and the maximum age is 80. So on to challenge number four. So challenge number four is to summarize the number of male and female people in the array. And I know from checking earlier, I have six female and four male. And what I'm gonna use here is a filter array action. So using the filter array, based on our original sample array, I want to see where the gender is equal to male or female. Now I could use XPath for this, but I thought I'd show you a slightly different technique. We're going to type in the expression, item, open, close brackets, single quotes, and we'll put in gender. And we want to see where the gender is equal to male. Now I want to do the same thing again. So I'm just gonna copy that to my clipboard, add an action, go to my clipboard and paste that in. But the only change I need to make here is female. And so this will filter the array for those that are male or those that are female. And then using compose action like I did in the previous sample challenge, I'm just gonna provide a string to say there are how many male people and how many female people. And we'll go into the expression tab here and we're going to use length. Now length will return the number of objects within an array. And because we filtered based on the gender, we should get now the number of male and the number of female. So we know that our filter, our filter array one is based on the male number. And then we can also insert the similar expression for our female. So length, again, open close brackets, and that was based on filter two and hit okay. Right, we'll save that and test, and then we'll move on to our final challenge. So we just fire up the scope for challenge four. We can see the filter array. We have the input here, which has everyone one through to 10. But then if we look at the data within the output, you can see we just have the gender male. And the same again will apply to the female. And if we look at the compose, we have four male people and six female people. So challenge five is all about comparing the original array with this other array that we have here. So the scenario is all based on a form that's been completed. We've saved all the results to a Microsoft list and I want to compare who from the original list has responded so I can go and chase up the individuals that haven't responded. So again, there are examples out there using an apply to each, but I'm gonna show you a relatively straightforward technique using just a select and a filter array. So the first thing I need to just highlight is that the common value within both of the arrays is the email address. We can see here we have the email and there are four emails that we have within this array here. If 
I jump up to the original array, I have those 10 users and I'm going to see do the emails in the array below appear in this array above. So the first thing I need to do is to use that trusty select action and that just enables me to create an array of those emails. So we're gonna go and get the form responses that you see here. I'm gonna enable the text mode and then I'm going to use the expression tab to type in item, open, close, brackets, the question mark, square brackets, single quotes, and the word email. That will give us a lovely array of those emails. And then I'm going to use the filter array action. And what we're going to do here is we're going to use our original array, which is our sample array from the dynamic content. And we want to see if the array that we've created above here contains the email address from this array above. So we need to look for select four, which is our uh, array of email addresses. And does it contain, in fact, does it not contain the email address from this array from above. So we're gonna to have to type in an expression, item, open close brackets, single quote, square brackets, and email. And so what this filter is going to do is it's going to take the original array from above, which is this one here with our email addresses, and it's gonna compare it against this new array that we've created, which is based on the emails here. And it's going to perform this condition where it does not contain this email address from this array, which should then give us the six users that are missing and haven't responded. And then of course we could chase them using an apply to each loop or potentially send them a group email using one of the challenges from above. So I hit save and I'll go ahead and hit test. And the final output hopefully will be those six users. So into challenge number five, we can see, as before, we've converted the array from an array of key values into an array of email addresses, of which there are four. And if we go into that filter, if we have a look at one of these emails, we've got wcleary2. Let's see if we can find them in the input. So wcleary2 is id3. If we look at the output, we have id1, id2, but you'll note that we then jump to id5, because presumably three and Lexi Pedal is also one of the users that has responded. So we have on our array there of the six users that we need to chase up and say, fill out that form. Okay, so five different challenges. I'd be quite curious to see how other people might have solved them. Um, you could potentially solve them using apply to eaches, but there's hopefully some more advanced techniques you've learned from the select and the expressions that I've shared with you today. Um, it'd be great to have a shout out on uh, social media if, you, if you've made some progress or if you've learned something new. And uh, if you haven't already, please make sure you like and subscribe. Thanks very much for watching. Cheers. Bye.